Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about the books I read in July. In July, I managed to read four books and I think that is the lowest number of books I've read per month in this year so far, but it's not really that big of a deal. I'm still really proud about how many books I finished, so let's just get right to the first one, which was Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. This was his first out of four secret projects that are going to be releasing this year and I ended up rating this one a 4 out of 5 stars. I do have a full review up of Tress if you are interested in that, I will link that down below. Our protagonist Tress, she lives on an island in a spore-filled ocean and spores are unique to her planet. Once water comes in contact with these spores, they can be very dangerous. Tress lives a simple life on this island and she's collecting teacups for her ever-growing collection until she falls for the son of the Duke, Charlie. Seemingly, the next day, Charlie and his family are to move off island and they do keep in contact with letters but once those letters stop, Tress realizes that Charlie is in danger and she goes on a wild adventure to save him. I thought this book was very whimsical, it was very cozy, and it did give off a fairy tale-esque vibe. Tress as a character, she is growing to her own independence and I really liked her seafaring adventure where she does have a found family and it's not much about saving Charlie, it is, but it's also about Tress and her story. There is a very pleasant surprise with the narrator if you are familiar with Brandon Sanderson's books. He did add a unique twist to Tress's story and it was very nice. Overall, I really love the growth that Tress has and exploring the planet with her. The next book I read was a reread and this was A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab. This is book two in the Shades of Magic series. I first read this book back in 2017 and I would ended up rating it five stars but on this reread I lowered my rating to four out of five stars. In this series there are parallel worlds that are connected through the city of London. There are these unique magicians known as Antari that can jump in between these worlds and we are following Cal who is an Antari from Red London and he is an ambassador to all these parallel worlds. However, his side hobby of being a smuggler does get him into a world of trouble. Now my thoughts on A Gathering of Shadows. This book unfortunately does fall into the second book syndrome that I did not notice when I first read it. There were a lot of instances of foreshadowing and twists and turns that were being hinted out, but it was quite obvious of what these twists were going to be. Although this was a reread, I still wanted to have that surprise factor at some points in the book. The main plotline in this book is surrounded something called the Element Games, which is a type of Olympics for magicians. Once we got to the Element Games, it was very fun to read with all the action and the duels that they go through, but the build up together was very slow. With all that being said, I did love reading about our characters again with Kel, Lila, Holland, Alucard, um, and Rye. They're amazing. I love seeing their growth from book one to book two. And the writing does hold up. The action really does keep you glued to the page. So I am curious to see how I do think about book three, uh, Conjuring of Light, and if my thoughts have changed from when I first read it. Then I picked up a new release. This is Bring Me Your Midnight by Rachel Griffin, and I ended up rating it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is a YA fantasy romance standalone, and it's centered around witches set on an island. I also do have a review up for this one that I just uploaded. If you're interested in that, I will link that down below as well for you. We're following Tana, a witch who has always been expecting to marry the governor's son, Landon, in order to forge an alliance between her witch island home and the mainlanders. In this world, witches, they need to release their magic every full moon into the ocean, but once Tana misses this monthly ritual, she runs into a mysterious boy, Wolf, from a forgotten coven. Through a wolf, he does help Tana to release her excess magic, but by performing forbidden dark magic. I really enjoyed the writing in this one. It's very atmospheric, it's very poetic, and it does give off the witchy vibe. 
And I really like the magic system of having your magic needing to be released and we see the consequences, the negative consequences of that on the island. With Tana, she does come to realize that there are many secrets that are being revealed to her and she does handle it quite well, I would say. However, we do see her grapple with the truth and who to believe as well as her growing feelings for Wolf. On the romance end, it wasn't my favorite. It was alright, it gave off a lot of Romeo and Juliet vibes, but I really enjoyed the themes of sacrifice and choosing duty over your own personal needs. Really nicely done. The last book I read this month was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett, and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This is a cozy fantasy, and I had a blast reading this one. We're following Emily Wilde, who is a professor from Cambridge, and she is going on a research expedition in a faraway remote village in Norway. And she is trying to find these elusive fae known as the Hidden Ones. However, with Emily, she is not the most sociable person, and it's hard for her to make a good bond with the villagers until her academic rival, Wendell Bambly, shows up and he is very charming and they then collaborate on this project together. However, there is more to Wendell that meets the eye and Emily, she really just cares about getting her research done. First off, the characters were great. I really liked Emily. She is a bit odd, a bit quirky, and she is very, very intelligent and very driven to seek out knowledge and getting answers for her fairy research. Some moments her caring side does come out and she wants to rescue people but then that ends up in quite dangerous situations for her. For Wendell, he does have a secret that is revealed through the unique format of this book and it is told in academic focused journal entries that really pertain to the encyclopedia that Emily is working on. I do really like the contrast between Emily and Wendell because their personalities are quite opposite and it was really fun to see their dynamics play out on the page and it really did end up in a rival academic dynamic that was very entertaining to read about and it ended up in a quite unconventional partnership that they both endure. <laughs> I was very pleasantly surprised at how cozy and wintry this book is with the fairy adventures that we go on with Emily and Wendell. Although I didn't really like the academic speech so much because that did slow down the pacing of this book. However, once we get to more personal journal entries with unexpected events that happen, it really did suck me in and I just had to keep reading. I also have to warn you that this is an adult fantasy and we do see quite a few violent fairy moments that happen so they're quite graphic and bloody. <laughs> Overall, this is what I would define as a cozy fantasy with adult themes. You do get that scholarly research, light romance, and an endearing pair of characters. And with that, those are all the four books that I read in July. I hope you enjoyed listening to what I thought about them and maybe you would want to pick up one or two of them. With that all being said, I also hope you can give me a huge thumbs up Hit that subscribe button down below and don't forget to ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!